So our next presenters are Eric Dupuy and Nikki Crow, who together submitted a grant for a project about managing a sugar bush in a more environmentally friendly way and more efficient. And so they have yeah. some um, great details for us. And um, I think for many of us who didn't know, we'll learn what a sugar bush is. So Nikki and uh, Eric, go ahead. Thanks, Wayne. So today we're going to talk about the sugar bush um, and how we use the Minnesota SARE uh, to address and reduce fuel usage and increase the potential of um, value-added maple syrup products. The first question to answer is what is a sugar bush and um, how do you go about tapping trees for maple syrup products? Eric is our expert in everything sugar bush. I learned a lot from him. So I'll let him tell you more about his operation. So my name is Eric Dupuy. Um, I'm a sugar producer from Sawyer, Minnesota on the Plangelac Reservation. Um, I don't know, I, I grew up watching my grandpa do this, do it, and uh, I don't know, about 15 years ago or so, maybe a little longer, I don't know. Me and my dad started to uh, make our own maple syrup. Uh, a sugar bush is uh, just a, like, kind of like an apple orchard where it's just a bunch of sugar, a bunch of maple trees um, in an area that makes it convenient to collect sap from. Yeah, the sugar maples usually is what we tap normally as the sugar maple is, uh, has a higher, higher percentage of sugar than the reds or box holders or silvers. So we try to stick to just tapping the sugar maples. Um, anybody that's uh, I'm not familiar with it, it's, you take the sap from the, from the tree and boil it down and into syrup or into sugar if you want to boil it down even further. So uh, Eric and I met about five years ago uh, when I was asking around for somebody who could help with a, sh a workshop. We had an evaporator that we purchased through our tribal college extension program, but I had no idea how to um, use an evaporator. So I was introduced to Eric through his dad who works at resource management and um that's where I started learning more about tapping the trees <clears throat> and, um, and boiling down the sap. Eric helped with the workshops and the events. He would start out with the winter tree identification, uh, tapping trees and tubing, boiling the sap, the canning and bottling. In our culture, in the Anishinaabe culture, Ojibwe culture, culture, the maple camps would happen with families and communities. And this is kind of what we set up in our workshops and events where we would provide um, taps and bags, uh, bag holders to the community. And we would go out to a piece of camp county land on, on the Fond du Lac reservation where we could all tap the trees. <clears throat> and Eric would, would come out there with us to help us identify uh, those trees and then show us how to boil the sap and can and, and uh, finish and bottle the syrup. One of the needs that I found um, in talking to Eric was about finishing the syrup and we wouldn't be able to complete that task without um, a better evaporator on his part or on our part at extension and a better filter. What I know from working with Wayne Martin through SARE and having him come to the community and, and talk about the SARE programs. Uh, he's been to several events that we have over at Fond du Lac that there was this funding available. So I brought that to Eric and I said, what I don't know is how to explain what it is that you need. So he told me about his trouble with not having a filter press to really clean the maple syrup. So this picture here is of Eric. I hand drew this one. 
<laughs> um, Eric taking his syrup out to another producer's farm, having to reheat it and then filter it and then take it home. It was a really timely process for him. Well, one of the uh, problems that I had with uh, trying to grow grow my operation was that uh, the filter press, uh, I would have to, like she said, I'd have to take it to a, another friend of mine, another producer, but when you take it off the evaporator uh, and, and then you got to put it into a, into a container and then I'd have to take it out to his place, which this means I got to reheat the syrup. Well, before that, we used to filter through uh, cheesecloth and you leave a lot of sediment, impurities, uh, sugar sand, stuff that has been sucked through the roots of the maple tree and that would come out. And once your bottles had settled, you would see that on the bottom of the, of the jar, and, which wasn't good for commercial, for, for sale. So we decided that uh, a filter press would would be needed to have a good product and it would also solve the fact that I would use less fuel to reheat and uh, that would be more convenient and save time. And the evaporator, um, the evaporator I had, it worked, but you used quite a bit of wood. Um, it was taken, it was taken probably I don't know, half a cord to get a couple of gallons of syrup. And uh, it also takes a lot longer when you're, you don't, well, it takes about 40 gallons of sap to equal a gallon of syrup. So uh, it takes a while to boil this, boil it down. My old evaporator, I would get to boil around, I don't know, 35 to 40 gallons an hour. And I haven't got to use the new one yet but it, I'm told that it can boil off 90 to 100 gallons an hour or more. So it'll definitely be more efficient and I will use a lot less wood. So it's a little better on the environment as well. One of the things that, um, the favorite things um, that Eric would do when we were having the workshops and events was making the maple sugar. It's one of my favorite, and I call it a very valuable value added product out of the maple sugar and the candy. <clears throat> Some of the other things that you can make uh, value added products are um, maple cream, maple butter, maple vinegar. Um, but saving time now also gives Eric time to work on these other products as well. Some of the challenge you run across doing running the sugar bush is uh, weather. Uh, you, you're waiting for waiting for the right temperatures to tap the trees. Um, you don't want it to warm up too much or or it can end your season. Uh, the snowfall amount out in the woods is, can uh, definitely be a challenge, especially before the tubing where I had to try to haul the sap out of the woods with, with four wheelers or whatnot. So that made it very difficult. But now that we've got the tubing in the woods, it's a lot simpler. Um, the uh, the COVID this year, that was that was a big challenge. That was I had to file an extension this year due to the fact that with the uh, social distancing and quarantining, it made it tough for family and friends, you know, with the social distancing to actually to do the full uh, sugar bush this past year. So that is also an opportunity that uh, Minnesota SARE has in their grant program is extending the grant period. It's a no cost extension and lots of USDA grants have this option and other programs will have that option as well. <clears throat> so in order to, this project to end uh, February of this year, we'll be able to go until February of next year and, and get some of those things done in, that we set in the grant uh, for, for next year. The other opportunities is um, hopefully Eric is uh, willing to apply for more grants and uh, he actually has applied for other grants. <clears throat> and then um, networking with new customers uh, with new products. 
With, through the SARE grant, as far as the funding was concerned, he was able to upgrade the his evaporator and the pans that go with it um, and the, the filter press with the $9,000 farmer rancher grant. What was important was that Eric knew what he needed and I had the, um, the experience of writing grants. So what I told him was I needed to know what he needed and I could put it in a grant language that Sarah would understand what he needed. And I called up Wayne and Kate or emailed and just let them know, here's an idea of what I have working with one of our local producers. And they said, that's a good idea. And, um, you know, they, I know Wayne gave his phone number and Kate's phone number, and they're always quick to get back to you, even when uh, they're working from home and during the COVID. So that's always helpful when you're, when you're going for grants, um, is just to give those folks calls. Their numbers are on there for a reason. Run your ideas by them if you're not experienced in writing grants or finding somebody from an organization who is and asking for their help. <clears throat> That's what provided uh, the opportunities uh, for, for us over at Fond du Lac to have somebody that could show us more just by being able to upgrade their equipment with um, some necessary funding. And we just want to say um, miigwetch or thank you. This is Eric's email and my email if you have any questions. Eric can answer any questions about the sugar bush and I can maybe answer some questions about uh, funding sources. There have been a couple of questions that have come in. Um, first of all, why, why does the sap harvest stop with warm weather? Why is it stopped by warm weather? Doesn't the well, sap run all, all summer long? It has to do with the pressure, like the barometric pressure. And then when, it, when it's cold and when you get the, the cold nights, like below freezing nights and the warm days creates a positive negative pressure in the tree. And also the fact that is when you start getting warmer weather, the tree senses that wound because you drill a hole into the tree. And so when you drill that hole, that tree senses that that hole is there and it can feel that there's um, there's bacteria entering that hole. So the tree will start to encapsulate that hole and start to shut the sap flow off. So the hotter the weather, the more bacteria and the quicker the tree shuts down. So a question too about how climate change is affecting syruping. Are you noticing an impact from climate change? It seems to be. Um, we're not getting nearly as much snow on the ground, it seems, as we used to. Uh, it definitely seems to be warming up sooner. Our season seems to be shortening, I think. I think so where, we're where, I live, where we live right here right now is kind of odd anyway. We're so close to Lake Superior. There's Lake Superior, I think the it uh, you think it warms up down when you're right next to the lake a little bit sooner, but we don't quite get that effect here. So it's it's colder here earlier in the season, but yet we get that warm up um, a little sooner. So we, yeah, I think that the I think it's affecting us. So has it affected the? Um the total amount of production, has it reduced um, your harvest? Yes, it does reduce the harvest. Like I say, when it shortens the season, um, you, when you're not getting those, like I say, we get those really un, unusually warm days earlier in the year. And uh, like I say, that introduces the bacteria into the tree and, and it starts to slow your production down. Mm -hmm. How much time does it take to break down the evaporator? And how often do, do you have to clean it? Um, I usually, it's usually, unless it's a really, you get a lot of nitre and stuff in there, you don't necessarily have to clean inside the evaporator because you, when you heat it up, you're killing any bacteria anyway. It's usually beginning to end of the year, but if it gets real bad in the middle of the year, we can break it down. And my size, this new pan here will take a little bit longer to break down, probably 
it'd probably take a couple hours to uh, break it down and clean it. But it's not terrible. The hmm. uh, pan's pretty much just set on there. A couple more questions have come in. Um, did translating indigenous or traditional cultural protocol become a challenge in the grant writing process? No, I, I don't think we had to, um, that we had to put that into the, to the grant at all. It is something that we talk about. Eric and I will tell the story about um, how we first had an abundance of sap available to us um, and then how it got taken away from us and it was harder to receive the sap because we were lazy mm -hmm. and greedy people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a short, really short, short version of the story about Nanabaju and maple sap and why we tap the trees the way we do now. Mm. We all feast the trees in our own ways with our families or our friends uh, before and after and that wasn't anything that we, f we felt like we needed to write into the grant. Um, maybe to stand out a little bit, but it wasn't really that necessary. And then there's a general question about, um, are you in touch with Jodan Rosu, another Ashtonami member with a sugar bush? I don't know that. don't know that. I... Hmm. I know his name from over at White Earth. My friend gave me uh, his name uh, to purchase some syrup. And he's also got rice for sale too, uh, if anyone's looking. So if you're over at White Earth, get in, yeah. get in touch with Joe Dan. <laughs> I don't know him personally, so, but my, a good friend of mine does. The whole question is, how do you protect your seeds and knowledge from being taken over by other people, researched or mass produced? Um, they don't know if there is a way to do that. Just wondering. I don't think we're, there's anything you can do as far as other people um, taking the idea of selling syrup. I mean, as far as that goes, you know, it's crown maple and all these, they've made big business out of it already. But as far as our heritage and everything like that, I think, I think most of us are, are uh, happy to share our history and, and heritage and tell stories. It's kind of part of our education program. You know, we encourage it. Yeah. I think it helps, uh, educate people on more than just the process of maple syrup, but on natives as a whole and the history and, and their beliefs of, you know, being willing to share. Nikki, any thoughts? Just overall is knowing where you, you're buying your seeds from. I'm not buying my seeds from Amazon. If I really needed to grow the hand chody. I would ask Kona uh, in a respectable way uh, to learn from him about the seed. Um, I would research where I'm purchasing the seeds from. We just learned recently about uh, one seed company uh, that is, I, I would just won't be purchasing from them anymore because they are, they are taking over and profiting off of, small producers and those stories and and that source that's not how you earn or gain your your food like that and um and then knowing where your food is coming from and <clears throat> knowing where your food is coming from not using high fructose corn syrup and uh maple syrup products and Let's see and and advocating for for others uh, for if it's just on policy if it's at your favorite restaurant uh, or just buying local or when we're going to these big meetings like this when we can meet in person is bringing seeds and bringing food and trading for those and having those conversations 
So with that, I know you all want to raffle. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.